Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the shop. Let's get back to work on the stop. All right, to get this video started, um, while I was editing the video, uh, everything was looking really good, and then I went ahead and posted it off to YouTube. I came down to the shop and decided to, let's put the wings back on again, hook up the uh, cabane struts, put bolts through, get rid of the screws, put bolts through into the side of the fuselage, because that's the way it was designed to, to work. So I've got those in there. Uh, and then I grabbed the interplane struts on the wings. These little things over there on the wings, those things there. So I put those on. And much to my chagrin, uh, it stiffened everything up very nicely. And I'll, I'll show you as soon as I'm done yapping here. Um, I'll grab the GoPro and show you what it does. Um, and it firms it up enough where I'm kind of okay with it. Uh, I just need to go ahead and get the wing... Uh, Indicated so I need to make sure that that wing is top uh, wing the wing is straight just the way it is But I'm gonna I'm gonna change the uh, The connectors for the cabanes. It's still gonna be three millimeter uh, But instead of uh, having a, a nut on the back side of it, I'm gonna put blind nuts in so that way if I need to remove Anything say like to, like I said earlier if I've got to get inside the cowling to do any work um, you know just take the top wing off and just uh, um I can do that even up from at the field just by pulling the 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 interplane struts and the cabane struts. I can I can do it that way too. Um, but I just figured that's going to be uh, that's going to be the best way to properly secure it. That way you're not trying to get inside uh, with a pair of pliers to try to grab hold of the the three mil nut um, just to uh, make sure it's tight. Uh, with the blind nuts on the back side, I'll, it's it's gonna take care of the problem so that way when you're taking anything on and off it's just gonna make it that much easier and what I'll do is when I uh, when I make the little my little pieces of, of light ply or however they're gonna get held in um, I'll bring you guys along for the ride on that one just to show you how I do it and those will end up being epoxied in uh, into place epoxy on the inside make sure you're not gonna go ahead and crowd the hole that it goes into and then uh, when I set the uh, blind nut inside um, I'll make sure that when it gets pulled in, uh, just where the, the rim of it is, there'll be epoxy around it just to squish it out, just to hold everything in place. Okay, to begin with, let me see if I can show you with holding the fuselage as steady as possible, because it's gonna move, it's rocking. Um, is that this, the, this I'm pushing and pulling on a wing tip, and it's hardly moving at all, and I don't know how much of that you can see, it's very little, and the amount of push I'm putting on it is probably at least two pounds in each direction. So I'm, I'm rock solid with that. The side to side, since that's gone, I don't really need to put the cables in there. Now with the rotation, see how well I could do this one. If you can kind of see that, there's a very little bit of side to side rotation. Um, it's not as tight as it can be. So uh, when I put the interplane struts on, those will be tightened down properly. Right now, I've got the screws in backwards. I've got to return, I've got to go ahead and spin them around and have them face out, and then there's going to be three millimeter lock nuts on the back side of that. So that'll really tighten everything together. So that's going to help immensely. Plus, when it comes time to cover this thing, I'm going to put a fuel tank up on the top of this one. Not the one that's going to power the plane, the one that had up on the top wing for in real life. So it's going to come in and it's going to be about yay wide and come across and it's just going to come on up to the top and slope down. So this top wing will be glued together, even though it's designed to be taken apart if you want to. I'm going to glue both wings together, both halves together, So and that's just the way they're going to stay. So, uh, so this not only will be glued together, it'll have something up over the top. So any little bit of play that exists between these two wings here is going to stiffen up too, which in effect should minimize what I've got in the side to side. Uh, I've got to go ahead and make sure that that top wing is on straight. So I'm going to do what I did on the bottom wing is that I know this is true to the straight line of the fuselage and the bottom wing, the bottom wing sits true to this point right back here on the tail. So I'm going to do the same thing with the top wing. I'll just get a piece of string, 
uh, pin it and I'll measure out from center, pin it out and I don't have to go all the way out. If I want, I can drop in right about here on the wing and then the same distance out there and just bring it back just to see where it's gonna come to this point right back here on the tail. And then uh, once I know that that's true, um, we'll be good to go. Then I just need to go ahead and make the connections um, on the uh, bottom aileron up to the top aileron. It's just gonna go right from here up to here on both sides and put the servo control horn in on the bottom of this one. Now, the other thing, don't know if you can see it. If you look at these, this is the way it is in a rest position, neutral position. And out here, even though it's gotta be sanded smaller, uh, it's neutral position and these two line up perfectly. And why it is the way it is over here on this side, they both do the same thing, they both droop. So I don't know if it's because when it was in shipping, there was a little bit of twist induced into both of these. So what I'll do is before they get covered, I'll take these things off uh, and just set up a, a clamp down here on the, on the bench top, spray it down with some hot water ammonia, and then just let it sit overnight just to go ahead and try to take this twist out. And then we'll call those done. So I'm not that concerned by those things at all. So anyway, let me, um, at this point, get everything somewhat, somewhat torn down again. And I hate to say it, I'm gonna plug those holes uh, in the top of the fuselage that I, that I, you know, drilled through. So I'll plug those up, get all that sanded down. I can still get in there if I had to. I just run the drill from the inside out and I could do that by hand. Um, if I need to do that somewhere in the future, which I'm not intending on doing. So, uh, yeah, so let me get this torn down and then I'll start getting the, uh, the bottom wing set up with the control horn and then, uh, and then we'll get this set up top to bottom just to make sure that everything's going to work when we hook up the servos. And then uh, as soon as we're done with this, we'll come back to working on this. All right, before we get this video started, um, this, by the way, I'm Bud from Two Weeks in the Future. Um, yeah, we, with what's happening in the country and the world, um, my whole work schedule got changed. I've, uh, I'm working six days a week, and we're doing this uh, it's kind of a, like a weird split schedule. So uh, my time down in the shop, um, I just negated it. I just decided there's more important things for me to do than work on the plane. Um, and I'm going to be doing this for probably at least another four to six weeks. We don't know yet. Um, so it's most of my time will be tied up with work, uh, because we are an essential company. So I hope everyone out there is doing well. And, uh, I mean, so far, so far, so good. Knock on wood. Um, it, as far as I know, I'm, I'm relatively safe, but as of right now, um, you know, we're all good. So, so anyway, hope you're all doing well too. So anyway, before we get back to the plane, um, do this. And make sure everything's clean. Let's get back to work. All right, so here's where we're at. We've got the uh, uh, inner cabane struts, the cabane struts uh, remounted again. And let me show you what I did. First of all, yeah, I fixed my little problem, my self-imposed problem. So that's all smoothed out. Uh, once it all gets sealed and then covered, because it's getting covered with fabric, you'll never know that was there. So what I did on the inside was I came in, I'm hoping you can see it, I made these little plates uh, where I can put some T-nuts through. And like I said, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it through the camera. Uh, you probably can't. But anyway, I've got, uh, I got a set up front and then a set back here. So that's just uh, making it so I don't have to use these. Because these little three millimeter nuts, we're on the, they're on the inside. If you got to take it off, it's going to be a pain in the butt. Where now it's just a matter of just removing, uh, you know, four screws per side, and the cabane struts will come off. And I don't see that stuff going anywhere. And if you're worried, and then what I used on the screws, because I don't know if you guys have tried it before, but what I normally use on the screws, I even do it on wood screws too, um, and I'll probably do it for up here for the cowling. What it is, it's a, uh, and I'll show you a picture right up over here. Um, it, it's, it's called Vibratite, and it's designed for machines that vibrate, and they use those in aircraft. So if you've got a screw, you want to make sure just through vibration, it's not going to back out. 
if I if I had it with me, it's actually it's actually upstairs. But what you would do, you would uh, you'd pretty much just put that right on the thread. So you pull the little the little uh, little brush out, and then you just do a quick little swab around it, and then just set them up. I normally just put them up on edge like that, you know, on a piece of wood, and let it set up for about a half hour. And then when it kind of hardens, you go ahead and screw it in. It never fully hardens. It always it has like a, a rubbery consistency to it, but when it goes in, it'll kind of bind. So it doesn't want it, it's gonna absorb any vibration and it won't allow it to back out. Uh, but if you just come in with a screwdriver, you just start turning it and just with the heat of rotating it, um, it'll soften it up and just pulls right out. So it's really good stuff to get. I've got the bottle that I got, not lying to you guys about this, I got it back in uh, 2006. And I've barely put a dent in it. You can get little tubes through uh, through Amazon for about eight bucks, and just look it up. It's called Vibratite, and it's something that you'll get it, and you'll never stop using it. It works great on planes. All right, now the other thing I'm going to be doing, because we got to get right back to the wing, but I just want to show you how I'm going to try to balance everything out in here the best I can. All right, this little line right here, this is where the CG is going to be between the bottom wing and the top wing. So we're going to be right down here. What I plan on doing is with the fuel tank, this is just on the plastic covering on it. Um, I want this thing centered on the CG so that way it doesn't matter um, in flight. You're not gonna notice a change in uh, whether it be nose heavy or tail heavy during flight because the fuel tank's gonna be right on the CG. And because with the weight up front, that big chunk of aluminum up front, um, I need to move weight back. So this will just come on in and sit down inside here, just about like that. So I just, I'm just gonna have to come in because I got plenty of room uh, for the wing to sit underneath and it's not gonna hit anything. So I'll just be making a mounting brackets, uh, put some rails in, some cross beams. It'll probably be, uh, it'll probably be some light ply with some holes drilled in it. And then I just go ahead and strap the, the uh, fuel tank down. But this is where this is really gonna sit, is back here. So I do have room up in front. I've got to put the ignition system that's probably going to be up in the front uh, ahead of the fuel tank. So even though we still got weight up front, I'm trying to move as much back as possible because we got our servos here and then the batteries can actually sit down here on the bottom deck in the back. Or I could build in another little uh, shelf underneath the, uh, the servos. We'll see how much room I've got there. All right, so let's go ahead and let's put the wings back on and uh, I'm gonna make a little uh, jig that, uh, and I'll show you how I'm gonna do it uh, so I can make sure that we've got a way to measure the angle of incidence because the bottom wing is gonna be positive two and the top wing itself is going to be at zero. So we're gonna have to get all that stuff set up and have the wings mounted with those angles before I make the uh, little connectors for the, inner, for the uh, ailerons. All right, I made it, and that's the little template we're going to use. And I'm going to show you kind of how I did it. And I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. Uh, that is the, sorry about that, that's the center of the leading edge. That's the lifting point. So that is one of my markers. And then on the tail, you can see right down here, there's another line. So that is the marker. Now all I'm going to do is come in, and I'm going to just, it's, it's, going, to, it's going to be an arbitrary number. It'll probably be somewhere around the two inches, if not higher. I'll make a mark straight up from here at about two inches and straight up from about here at two inches, draw a line across, cut it. That is going to be level with the, uh, with the angle of attack on the wing. So when the wing's at zero, that'll be level across the top. So let me kind of show you how I did this. Uh, because I was able to split the wings in half and, and I did use this part of the, uh, sorry about that, this part of the lower wing. Um, because even though you've got this little cutout right here, this is actually the same distance away from the leading edge as this is. All right, let me see if I can make this a little bit easier to understand by putting this up on the counter. So anyway, I came in and I sat this on the top so that the bottom edge like this was even with it. And then I came on the opposite side with a pencil and just traced the, uh, sorry, now you're upside down, and just traced around the top of it. Then I came over to the bandsaw and cut this out and then just kept sanding away until it got it so that it was sitting flush. So what this will do is this will come on in and go from here 
over to there. And now, let me get on the other side. And now you can see, this is the beginning of the leading edge, and that's where it trails off, and this is even with the top surface. So, and because both upper and lower wing are the same, um, this will work on both wings. I've already, I've already tested it out, and it's good. So, uh, so this is how I'm going to make my measurements uh, on angle of attack. So, I can still have this, and it does not matter how this is set up. If this is set right, just sitting level on the countertop here, if this was at zero, this would be at negative two. So I just need to make sure that this is always two degrees less, or two degrees, let's call it two degrees down in relationship to this being at zero degrees. So won't be that difficult. Anyway, that's how I did that one. And uh, you know, this will just be getting used pretty much just for now, but I'll keep it, I'll hang on to it. If I sell this plane for any given reason, this will go with the plane. So let's go ahead and we'll call this another video. So then video number three on the wings will be uh, getting everything, uh, do the final setup on it, and then uh, get the uh, little control rods for the uh, ailerons connected. And then the wing's done, and then we'll start working on the tail. So I'll see you guys next time. I'm down in the shop.